Coming up next on Q30 News, former UN investigators come to campus to discuss their involvement in the UN Oil for Food program. Also, the strikes at Sikorsky aircraft have ended. We'll bring you the latest. And severe weather hits the Midwest. All that and more next on Q30 News Nightcast. The next generation of news starts right now. Former UN investigator visits, camp in a, visits campus. Good evening, everyone. I'm Erin Aid. And I'm Fabio Lanero. Lawyers investigating UN oil for food scandal were on campus talking about it this past week. Q30's Greg Clary brings us more. Two members from the investigation committee into the United Nations oil for food scandal spoke at Quinnipiac Thursday. Listeners learned how the scandal took place. I'm definitely glad that I came. It was very informative. It was good to see um, how the program was run and the problems that arose with the program and how it was handled. It shed a lot of light on um, the goings on and how these investigations work and especially hearing them from you know, a real insider's perspective. Speakers Mark Califano and Quinnipiac professor Jeffrey Meyer are trying to repair the UN's tattered reputation. One of the things we hope to explain to people is that this is not an organization that has is unique in these problems. Other multinationals and even national organizations have them. My hope is that the focus is on how to make the uh, UN uh, stronger managerially and uh, to have a more pervasive ethical cultural about it. Mr. Califano and Meyer hope through their lecture the public receives the information they need to know about the UN. From the law school, Greg Clary, Q30 News. One man is dead and one wounded in a shooting on Interstate 95 yesterday. Police say Hell's Angels motorcyclist Roger Mariani of Stratford was killed as a passing vehicle opened fire near exit 42. Mariani was with a group of bikers when shots rang out and he was struck in the upper torso. A green SUV with Florida plates is believed to be involved with the shooting. The Teamsters Union at Sikorsky Aircraft have approved a contract offer. After being on strike for six weeks, union members will be returning to work tomorrow after approving a new contract yesterday in Stratford. The union barely voted in favor of a new contract. The vote was approved by just 70 votes. Sikorsky management went as far as taking full-page ads in local newspapers to try to gain the support of union members. Meanwhile, ExxonMobil tops this year's Fortune 500 list. The list compiled by the popular magazine was released today. Four Connecticut companies made the top 100. Fairfield-based Energy General Electric ranked 7th, and Aetna Healthcare in Hartford ranked 91. Walmart stores, the world's largest retailer, claimed the number two position behind Exxon. Walmart had been number one on the list for the past four years. Remember the last time you gave money for a fundraiser? Most likely it happened in front of a grocery store or on a street where a pack of M&Ms were given out in exchange for a contribution. Well, five years from now, excuse me, for five years now, the American Liver Foundation has called New Haven its home for their national fundraising event. Like giving out M&Ms, the folks at ALF make sure their benefactors don't leave on an empty stomach. Q30's Max Winnitz takes a closer look. Sights, the sounds, and the aromas of culinary arts were on full display at the New Haven Omni. It was the fifth annual Flavors event and a fair to raise money for the American Liver Foundation. Like the fella once said, ain't that a kick in the head? Tonight's gala features 24 of the best chefs throughout Connecticut. Now, in addition to preparing tonight's hors d'oeuvres, each chef has been designated one table where they will prepare a five-course meal for tonight's ALF supporters. Guests paid anywhere between three to $15,000 for tables at the gala. One of those guests was none other than News Channel 8 meteorologist Matt Scott. Those chefs, they're not here to they're their food. They have a vested interest in, in, in yeah, to raise a tremendous amount of money for, for a great cause. But Chef Stuart London didn't mind helping his cause, putting his culinary talents to work. It's a lot of fun for the chefs. Uh, we get to play directly to a small audience. Um, you get to do your fine, some of your finest work, and you get to have a good time. And it's for a great cause. So you might be asking yourself, what foods did some of these chefs prepare? 
Well, I have a nice refreshing fennel and dive salad, um, a traditional bolognese sauce that we do at my restaurant, and rack of lamb. And then we're going into some different sorts of seafood. We have some scallops, and we have some uh, asparagus, white asparagus, truffles. It wasn't just food that brought money to the Liver Foundation. This cooking jacket, signed by all 24 chefs, brought in money too. Altogether, the Flavors event brought in over $110,000. And that was Max Winnitz. Hartford welcomed more than 40 soldiers from Operation Iraqi Freedom. On Saturday, members of the 208th Personnel Service Detachment based in Iantic returned after a year in Kuwait. The unit arrived in December 2004 to manage combat essential personnel information and military personnel support. Governor Well attended the ceremony and praised the soldiers as heroes. The Theater for Community Club will be presenting a stage version of the popular movie and book Dead Man Walking. The play originated from author Helen Prejean's experience as a spiritual advisor to death row inmates. The club will be performing three shows on campus and three at the Long Wharf Theater in New Haven. The plays on campus will take place in CLA 2, room 106, this Friday and Saturday at 8 p.m. and Sunday at 2 p.m. The plays at Long Wharf Theater will be held next Thursday and Friday at 8 p.m. and next Saturday at 2 p.m. Tickets are on sale for $10 for adults and $5 for students. And coming up next on Q30 News, airline quality reports are here. We'll tell you how some airlines did. Also, there may be some spring cleaning at the White House. And the Pope remembered across the world yesterday. That and more next on Q30 News. White House Press Secretary Scott McClellan and Treasury Secretary John Snow might become victims of a shakeup at the White House. According to several former White House staff, the possible departure of both men from their current posts could be among several senior level staff announcements to come within the next couple of weeks. The White House Press Office declined to comment, saying they never comment on discussion involving personnel. A federal jury has found that al-Qaeda conspirator Zarkarius Marsawi is eligible for the death penalty. A new phase in the trial begins Thursday to decide if he will be put to death. Marsawi is the only person to face charges for the terrorist attacks of September 11, 2001. The testimony on Thursday will come from the families of the victims of 9-11 because the 9-11 plan, plan could have been discovered had Marsawi not lied after his arrest. Prosecutors say that because of this, he deserves to die. It could be a first in American politics. The New Orleans mayoral race could have more voters outside the city than inside. With the election less than a month away, the candidates are doing their best to reach evacuees who could hold the key to this election. Alino Chow has more. Carolyn Schecksneider lives in Houston, but says New Orleans will always be home to her. It's why she's volunteering her time, going door to door, making sure others like her take the time to vote. Hi, this is Carolyn Schecksneider. My pitch is, you know, I'm a native of New Orleans because I want them to know, I understand, and I know what you've been through because I've been there too. Sheck Snyder and her family rode out the storm in New Orleans. Her brother is still missing. Though she has no immediate plans to return to the Crescent City, she says one day she might, if the right person is elected. She's not alone. I just think I have to rebuild my house. That's what we're working on. Houston is home to the largest number of Katrina evacuees, an estimated 150,000. Overall, nearly a quarter million former residents are spread out over all 50 states. That's a lot of votes. Experts say it may be enough to swing the election. The turnout of the evacuees will be extremely important. Susan Howell, professor at the University of New Orleans, has been watching local politics for 32 years. The top candidates are traveling to Atlanta, to Memphis, to Houston, to Dallas. So you're running for mayor, but you have to go to four or five different states. Candidate Mitch Landrew has been crisscrossing the region. It's just been a very strange election process, all these experts that think they know what they're doing are completely confused. Keeping track of the issues is also a challenge, even for the incumbent, Ray Nagin. If you're staying in New Orleans, it's about uh, garbage and debris removal and making sure that the criminals don't take over. Uh, but for people outside the city, it's about how do I get home. Nurseel Winfield is a third generation New Orleans resident. On this day, she's registering to vote. We are displaced and I feel like we don't say anything about it, do something about it, but then they don't know how we feel about it. They might feel that we're satisfied at being displaced. And you're not? No, we're not. 
Linda Jeffers is also volunteering her time. She wants to make sure evacuees have a voice in this election. The message to the candidates is that they need to understand that we're going to vote and they're going to have to address our agenda because we're coming home. Alina Cho, CNN, Houston. Airlines again hold the top spot, spots in a national survey of airline quality. The rankings were announced Monday. This and United has moved down to fifth from the fourth position last year. Southwest at number four is also down one slot for 2005. And a new airline coming into the ratings for one year Independence Air scored in the third position. AirTran remains at the second position, and again for the third consecutive year, JetBlue is in the first position in the National Airline Quality Rating. Passengers who flew last year found that people are flying more and complaining more. Their biggest grip is about lost baggage. The study found major carriers ranking lowest for quality. The annual survey found that Americans are again boarding planes as often as they did before the terror attacks of September 11. The Air Force says that a military C-5 cargo plane crashed at Dover Air Force Base Monday morning in Delaware. An FAA source said the jet had 17 people on board. The National Guard crew called the base to say that they had to make an emergency landing. According to an Air Force source, the C-5 landed short of the runway at around 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time. A Delaware state police official said the plane crashed just south of the Air Force base in a field. Images from the crash scene, sh excuse me, images from the crash scene showed the front nose of the plane shrown from the body and debris scattered across the ground. The tail section was also broken off. The conditions of the crew are unknown as of now, according to the Air Force. The FAA said the plane had, had taken off from Dover and crashed while attempting to return. Pentagon officials said that they were unsure if the plane suffered from a hard landing or something more serious. And covering the top stories around the world tonight, we head over to G Greg Clary with the latest in world news. Thanks, Aaron. Good evening, everyone. In world news, former Liberian President Charles Taylor pleaded not guilty to war crimes Monday. He faces 11 counts of war crimes, including crimes against humanity. Taylor is judged by the special court in Sierra Leone as being responsible for atrocities during their civil war. Current Liberian President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf says Taylor's trial could reignite an insurgency in her country. Thailand voters protested their Prime Minister's rule Sunday by boycotting the country's poll. Almost 70 percent of the 399 open parliament seats went uncontested and some will be left empty. The boycott threatened to throw Thailand into constitutional chaos. The voting was mainly peaceful except for a bombing which wounded four security guards and closed polls in the south. U.S. Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice and British Foreign Secretary Jack Straw visited Iraq last weekend. The two allies called for Iraqis to form a new government. The formation of a new government has been stalled due to sectarian opposition. The Shia-led United Iraqi Alliance won most seats in parliamentary elections. They nominated Ibrahim al-Jafari as prime minister, but Sunnis and Kurds were opposed to his nomination. Australia has agreed to sell uranium to China for power generation. China wants to use uranium to power its economy and reduce its dependence on oil. Australia has to accept assurances from China that the country will use the uranium for only peaceful purposes. Australian Prime Minister John Howard believes safeguards will be enforced. Australia has about 40 percent of the world's known low-cost uranium deposits. That's it for World News. Let's go back to Fabio and Aaron. Thanks, Greg. Pope Benedict XVI held a memorial mass in honor of Pope John Paul II. The mass on Monday followed Sunday night's prayer vigil, which marked the exact time of John Paul's death on April 2nd. Tens of thousands of people gathered to remember John Paul at St. Peter's Square, where Pope Benedict encouraged the faithful that John Paul's memory was still very much alive. Coming up next, Paul's in with the weather forecast. And the latest in entertainment news when we return next on Q30 News. And welcome back. What you're looking at here is some people enjoying the beautiful warm weather we had this past weekend. It certainly was warm and beautiful and I cannot wait for those warmer southern summer months to come. I know, I really can't wait either. And what better way to see if we're going to get more warm weather than going to see what Paul has in store for our forecast. Yeah, so hopefully he has something good coming up. Yep.
Sorry, Aaron and Fabio, the best is not yet to come. Don't you worry about that. We will see the 70s again, but unfortunately just not this week. But we did see some decent temperatures today, as you can see. It was 59 in Hartford, 57 in Meriden, and 54 down in New Haven. But in, today, the temperatures are about 5 to 8 degrees above the normal, which is pretty good for this time of year. But unfortunately, those temperatures are going to drop a little bit, and we're going to see a little bit of rain. More on that as we continue. To show you some of this rain, we got this massive storm front that's moving towards New England. The yellow that you see is that's the heavier of the rain that will be moving in our direction. But most of that rain will be heading towards New Hampshire and Maine, but we will still see some rain and possibly some rumbles of thunder tonight. So if, if you're scared of thunderstorms, you might want to turn the fan up a little bit so you don't have to hear the thunder. But if we take a look at what happened across the nation today, you'll see that there's another storm mass that is moving behind the one I just talked about, which is, as you can see right here, that mass will hit us with tomorrow's rain. And that rain should go well into tomorrow night. So if you had any activities that you had planned for outdoors, you might want to bring them inside. But unfortunately, it should be okay. The only other rain you see in the country was over in California. And, you know, that's just typical in Seattle, of course. But if you take a look at the temperatures across the nation today, it was 81 in Miami, another gorgeous day. It was 64 in Albuquerque. And in Dallas, it checked in at 74. But let's go to tonight. As I mentioned, there's going to be some showers, rain heavy at times, and possible rumbles of thunder. If we go ahead to tomorrow, we have 57 in winds and rains. The winds will be at 20 to 30 miles per hour. So bundle up and make sure you bring that umbrella. But let's look ahead to the five day. Tuesday and Wednesday, rainy days, but the sun's going to come back out on Thursday. Friday, we're going to see some rain, but the weekend should be pretty nice. Fabio and Aaron, back to you. Thanks, Paul. The weather we're going to get here feels like nothing compared to what the Midwest is, Midwest is getting, where at least 24 people are dead, down power lines and trees, ruined homes and businesses. That's what people are coping with today in the Midwest. Bill Capaccio has more. Alarms sounded across America's tornado alleys, including the twister-prone breadbasket Sunday into Monday, sending people like these Indianapolis concert goers running for cover. Tornadoes such as this one in Arkansas, Do you see them? along with straight lines of powerful wind, ravaged six states, leaving extensive damage. This man escaped from his collapsing house in Hopkinsville, Kentucky. We were in the hallway, and uh, the house just started shaking. And the next thing you know, the ceiling just down on top of us. Hardest hit, northwestern Tennessee. According to state officials, at least eight people are dead in Gibson County, another 12 in neighboring Dyer County. That number may go higher as, as daylight comes and, and we're able to search further out in the areas. Uh, destruction is, is almost absolute total destruction along some of the paths of this. There's, there's just nothing left of houses with foundation. The power of the storm awed local officials. The funnel cloud itself, um, it, it was large. That's all I can tell you. It was very large. Moved very fast. In addition to the tornado, straight line winds approaching 100 miles per hour caused extensive damage across the region. I'm Bill Caiaccio reporting from Atlanta. And now for the latest in entertainment news. We're going to head over to Nadine Wright. Actress Naomi Campbell was charged Thursday with assault after hitting her housekeeper with a phone. The incident occurred at 8 a.m. Thursday morning during an argument that the two were having as Naomi fired her. The 41-year-old housekeeper had to get four stitches. This isn't the first time the supermodel has committed assault. Campbell was charged with assault in Toronto in 2000 after beating an assistant and was sued in 2003 after throwing yet another phone at a former assistant. Former Friends star Matt LeBlanc and wife Melissa announced Thursday that they are filing for a divorce. The couple was married for three years and are party on amicable terms. They will remain the boat of parents and friends. According to legal documents filed by LeBlanc, the actor is seeking dissolution of marriage based on irreconcilable differences. The two will have joint custody of their daughter, Marina. Britney Spears appeared on Will and Grace Thursday night as a lesbian? Yes, that's right, the singer turned mom spoke with a southern drawl as Amber Louise from the great state of Alabama. Spears played opposite Sean Hayes as co-host of his talk show, Jack Talk. In real life, Britney Spears looked forward to the release of her third fragrance, Control, next month. In November, she is scheduled to release a new album, Not Bad for a New Mother. 
There's a new trend among celebrities. No, it's not small dogs that many celebrities have sported as if they're handbags, but adopting children internationally. Actress Angelina Jolie has influenced celebrities such as Jessica Simpson to consider adoption. Simpson, who recently split from hubby Nick Lachey, reportedly wants to adopt before having her own kids. She will most likely adopt from Mexico, where she first visited orphanages there at age 11 with a church group and has continued to support since. That's it for entertainment. Back to you, Fabio and Aaron. Thanks, Nadine. And coming up next, Carl has a complete roundup on Bobcat Sports. That's right. From QU Sports to Major League Baseball, he's got it all covered. And it's coming up next on Q30 News. Tennis, baseball, softball, golf. Wow, must be in spring. It's finally here. Well, it feels pretty good, doesn't it? It also feels good to be sitting here before you for the first time ever. By the way, in case you missed it, my name's Carl Wilhelm. Let's get her done. Here's a quick, and I mean quick, round of what's happening around the Q fields and courts in the leadoff spot. The baseball team improved to 4-2 in the NEC yesterday after splitting a doubleheader with Mount St. Mary's. Batting second, the softball team split a doubleheader with the Mount as well yesterday. The underhanded pitch and women are now 1-1 one one in the conference. Tennis anyone? Senior Greg Kamen led the way on the courts. He had a perfect Sunday when he didn't lose a game in either singles or doubles action while the men's tennis team defeated Wagner 7-0. The women play tennis too and they play it just as well as the men. They also took their match with Wagner 7-0. Finally on Sunday in overtime, the women's lacrosse team walked off against Wagner with a big 17-16 W thanks to freshman Tiffany Manzi who notched her second straight overtime goal. And in case you were wondering, on Saturday there was some running and jumping that took place at the Wagner Invitational. Apparently Quinnipiac women like to run and jump, and they were pretty good at it, as quite a few ladies looked like they knew what they were doing. The notables were junior Aaron O'Connell, who won the 800, and junior Heather Hoffman, who ran the steeplechase for the first time ever and finished second. That's all for on campus, but there's certainly a lot going on off campus, especially in Major League Baseball, where the season began today, and the Sox are defending world champions. The White Sox, that is. The Boston Red Sox, however, are looking to return to their 2004 championship ways this season. Meanwhile, the Yanks picked up a new pair of socks and Johnny Damon gave him a razor, and the pinstripes are looking to revert to those good old days of Y2K. That's the last year the Bronx Bombers won a world title. You can hear it now, the Fenway faithful chanting, year 2000, it's going to be great. This leads per perfectly into my closing thought of the day with the crazy Carl Capsule. Everyone's talking about the Yankees. It's a popular trend these days to go out and say the Yanks are going to win it all. Heck, Peter Gammons of ESPN even believes that New York has the better team. I'm sorry you may think I'm crazy, but the Beantown boys have a better all-around club this year. One year removed from a World Series title, getting no respect. Schilling and, John, Schilling and Josh Beckett will be in a solid in the rotation while Big Pop will blast bombs into the Boston Hob all season long. Look for the Sox to win 100 or more games. That's something has not happened since 1946. That's it for sports. Back to Big Poppy at the desk. Thanks, Carl. And before we head out tonight, we just want to remind you about the Strides for Sunshine Walk for Katie Vachant that's held on April 9th. That'll take place at, at 11 a.m. on April 9th, but you can, you can, you, excuse me, that'll take place at 11 a.m. late April 9th, but you can sign up at 10 a.m. If you sign up before April 9th, though, it's only $5 and $10 at the table the day of. And it starts at the rec center. It's about 3.1 miles. If you want to know more information, go to QuinnipiacBobcats.com. That's going to do it for us tonight. Thank you for joining. If you have any story ideas, make sure to send them our way at news at Q30.org. Have a great evening.